Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jim, can we take a look at the Elegy story uh, from Uncanny X-Men? Took place right after the Dark Phoenix saga. Don't have those issues. Prohibitively expensive, but... Uh, it is worth noting that the uh, that original cover is the one that becomes like the New Mutants '98, uh, you know, template, <laughs> right. if you will, right. of uh, Cyclops walking away from the X Men. Yes, kind yes. of a famous uh, a famous cover, possibly for our generation because of that New Mutants cover. I'm going to pull this out because it quite possibly can be the first uh, Marvel Grand Design in a way. Somebody called out uh, issue of uh, Captain America that um, potentially could be the first one. I'm not exactly sure which one they're talking about. Yeah, I think it might be the Kirby fill-in between the two Steranko issues of Captain America. I guess there was a deadline issue, mm -hmm. and it's and Steranko's issue ends with Captain America dead. And right. it's like, hey, Kirby, can you pinch us, hit us a, uh, a fill-in issue this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> All you know is that Captain America died at the end of last issue. Oh, my goodness. So I think it kind of recaps Captain America's life, which would be you know in line with the grand design sort of uh, big story. They say a rising tide raises all ships, Jimmy, and Cartoonist Kayfabe, the YouTube channel, is brought to you by the comic books that we make. Uh, we each have a bunch of stuff that's in print, so let's give it a quick run-through, and Kayfabers, if you dig the channel, you dig our comics, Kayfabe affect these comics, let these publishers know that Cartoonist Kayfabe is a force to be reckoned with, man. Uh, to begin with, my earliest graphic novel, WYSIWYG, Portrait of a Serial Hacker, follows the history of high technology from the phone system to WikiLeaks through the vessel of a single computer hacker, 288 pages. Back to print is the box sets and uh, new printings of each volume of Hip Hop Family Tree, which is my linear uh, sort of retelling of the history of hip hop and rap music. Four volumes in that set. I drew this stuff from 2013 to about 2015. After that comes X-Men Grand Design, where I take the history of X-Men, probably 8,000 pages of material, uh, mostly by Chris Claremont, miniseries, combine it all into one big uh, story, 240 pages of primetime X-Men comics. Get these volumes while they're still in print. There's an omnibus as well. The stuff that I've been putting my energy to lately is... Red Room Comics, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit, The Antisocial Network, this trade paperback is on stands today, collects the 2021 issues of Red Room, and lots of extra material in the back. Coming up in March is Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue number one, going to be coming out on a monthly basis, every issue completely self-contained. This is the cover that's going to be on the racks in the stores. These are the variants to go along with these comics, including the Jim Rug. By way of Robert Crumb, Zap Comics Zero cover. I'm going to go in reverse order, Ed, and start with Hulk Grand Design. This is my next book that's going to be available in comic shops everywhere starting in March, but you can pre-order it now. This is a retelling of the Hulk history, celebrating 60 years of the Incredible Hulk coming in March, and uh, 10,000 pages distilled down into two oversized issues, and these are some of the variant covers that will be available for Hulk Grand Design. Ed Piscor, Peach Momoko, Marcus Martin... And now, Jeff Darrow. Yes. So you can order any of these at your local comic shop. These are not retailer incentives, so just let the comic shop know which cover you want. Get all the covers if you want to. They won't cost anything extra. And uh, pick this up in March, but order it now. Next time you're at your comic shop, or call your comic shop. Let them know about Incredible Hulk Grand Design. You can also still get Street Angel, Deadly Girl Live from Image Comics, a homeless ninja on a skateboard. This collects eight complete stories of the Deadliest Girl Alive and is available wherever books are sold. And The Plain Janes, my 500-page uh, homage to shoujo manga about a group of high school kind of outcasts who start doing public art around their community and get all kinds of trouble as a result of that. Uh, one of the first young adult graphic novels. This thing actually began in 2005 and was just completed in 2019. So you can still pick that up again wherever books are sold now that we're done paying the bills back to the video so we finish off that double size issue of uh, the dark phoenix saga uh this issue comes directly after that uh, jean gray is dead striking image with the x-men old team and new team standing at the grave of this character and it gives uh claremont and burn license to retail all of 
X-Men history from issue one up until their greatest hits. And what a beautiful excuse to have John Byrne draw a little bit of everything. Draw a little Vanisher, draw a little Blob, you know? He draws a good Toad. This feels like the ultimate like original art collection. I totally. If, if you could have any of the Byrne stuff like from this issue... Almost every page would be fantastic. One of, I mean, this is a giant inspiration for that uh, X Men Grand Design that I did. You know, like when X Men, I mean, when Marvel comes a call in and they're like, "Ed, what do you want to do?" My mind went here because I, it's like, I, well, I want to draw everything. I want to draw a little bit of everybody, man. This exact panel is in uh, the Kirby Lee X Men number one, where there's a girl comes up to that to the school redhead chick. The X Men boys are looking down from the terrace and Iceman's gayness is built into issue one of the Kirby X-Men. And he's like, a girl, big deal. Uh, in the old issue, like they're, they were establishing Bobby Drake as like the littlest boy of the crew, but it has a different tone these days, man. You know, doing a, a rejiggering of the, the cover for X-Men issue number one in their own way. Um, beautiful montages. This kind of like reworking a, an existing scene, a lot of that is informs Hulk grand design. Sure. You know, that kind of thing. And this little bit of uh, then Magneto reappeared. <laughs> you get quite a bit of that throughout this issue of the same characters coming back through for round three and round four and so on. The grand design way. <laughs> it really is. But again, really uh, reminds me of some of the angles in Hulk grand design. Sure, man. Uh, the gridding off of these panels before they like go into inks, you could see you could see it all here. By the way, I want to give shouts to uh, to Stand Up Dan, who's sending us two more volumes of John Byrne's Elswin books. Man, uh, twelve to sixteen more issues are coming our way, Jimmy, in transit right now. I am constantly shocked by the comics and the books that exist. Yes. I just saw this week two big books of John Romita Jr. like pencils that I had no idea existed. Mm. Like, what world do we live in? And, <laughs> and these are books that have been out for years, and it's like, you're, I'm only just hearing about them? You know something? <laughs> Another tangent. Uh, I have the, the, the Conan uh, Essential coming. Um, it might even be at the Cafe P.O. Box. P. 3071. 3071. <laughs> Munhall PA 15120. Uh, issue number 19 was shot directly from pencils. And those essentials are in black and white. So it's going to be real cool checking that issue out in a black and white stage. That'll be an episode of. On That's the really channel. interesting. I didn't realize that. There's a. I have like the Conan Saga, you know, the magazines, uh -huh. the black and white magazines that reprint those Barry Windsor Smiths. And one of them has a pencil story. It's got to be that story. Got to be. And I never realized that was why. I always thought it was just an odd, kind of an odd choice, but really welcome. Yes. Back to the uh, X Men joint. Yes. <laughs> Heck of a cerebro. And that's that's kind of Kirby ish compared to like the, the one that he established uh, early on there. Um, issue 10. It's like you could go issue by issue. This is the grand design way, dude. Yeah, this uh, The Stranger, I believe, here, uh, a character that shows up and kind of does a very similar thing in the Hulk, by the way. <laughs> so you're going to get a panel like this in Hulk grand design as well. I, I put a panel in there myself, man. I'm I, impressed by the density of these page layouts. Like, you know, I see this and I think X-Men grand design with mm -hmm. the four tiers. Yeah. Pretty dense for an American comic book. I, I know that other people did it. It's not unheard of, but pretty dense for uh, even by x-men standards packing lots of stuff into these pages and we know that john Byrne can do dynamism he could do those big mm -hmm. money shots no room for that here man but love that juggernaut you know busting through yeah and he has it's, it's such a good shape for that character and it even has like the issue where it's more mysterious where they're setting up obstacles and you don't really see him which i believe is the alex toth issue yes. Uh, that's drawn over top of uh, Jack Kirby's breakdowns. We have an episode uh, about that in uh, the in the archives. It's pages like these, man. And then when you get here, you know John Byrne is like, but everybody else isn't, you know, because it's your super adaptoid. It's all it's all your B-listers. It's all your jobber villains, man. You know, like a dude made of uh, hay. What the <laughs> fuck. Yeah, that guy doesn't seem too tough. <laughs> then they build in the soap opera parts of like their love interests. Even this is a thorough, thorough issue. Yeah, this is straight romance comic panels. It's like they're letting us know that yeah, they did read all those comics ahead of time. Dude, the amount of words. <laughs> yeah. Poor Tom Orzakowski. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, he better have done he, some he, of those he's exercises. The he's the victim in this issue. <laughs> <laughs> he better have done some of those exercises. Uh, the thick panel borders is something that I used in uh, X-Men uh, Grand Design, and it's used here to delineate the flashback mm -hmm. moments. What do you say, man? Worst costumes in... Uh... Those are really bad. I love the original costumes. I think they look really cool. It, they look really cool the way Byrne draws them, too, man, because he doesn't make the blue... blue. He makes it black, yes. it, and that's the way that I chose to make it as well, because I thought that that... First off, black and gold, that's Pittsburgh colors, yep. but uh, it's sharp. Yeah, I think it looks really good. And and yeah, these new costumes, like, what? This, this, is, a deal? this is a winner. That's kind of a classic for sure. But like, Angels is nothing. Suspenders. Beast, like... Just terrible. Just terrible. Even the belt there sucks on uh, that guy. Like, you know, but we're very used to the blue yeah. Cyclops. Uh, we're getting into Salbu Summit territory <laughs> with, these, with these joints here. We're getting to Steranko territory. With these here, we're getting to New Adams territory. This is an amazing cluster of issues that signified the cancellation of the series. Yeah, it's a heck of a spread. That's what happens when, you know, they're relying on newsstand sales and those numbers don't come in for many, many, many months. So then it like skips to reprints for a long, long time classic moment like whenever i was putting my stuff together and tell me jimmy when you were putting hulk grand Des uh, grand design together uh there are certain classic moments probably like the transformation sequences things like this you look at a bunch of those and then you have to contribute to the game so like knowing that this is a splash page that that uh neil adams put together to sort of end his sentinel 2 uh, trilogy of issues or whatever seeing burn do his version you gotta you gotta do yours man you got to do your own. And you know I definitely did when it came time to do uh, X-Men Grand Design. This made me laugh, too. Uh, as he just transforms, like, into Sauron. It's it's so ridiculous, panel to panel. And I can remember talking to you early in X-Men about, like, uh, Fletcher Hanks. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and, and his sort of, like, storytelling from panel to panel. And I feel like this is a totally an example of that kind of storytelling. That's exactly the, the thought going into X-Men Grand Design. Like, let's, let's take a, let's strip away all the, um, superficial character stuff. Let's just handle plot. And if you do it a certain way, it is, first off, it's the ultimate boys comic. You know, it's the ultimate kid comic where it's just like, you just want cool shit. Uh, but it does have that Fletcher Hanks vibe of just pure whimsy. This reminds me a lot of your uh, initial X-Men piece, the social media piece that you oh, posted. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, that's a detailed drawing for, you know, a third of a page, J just in the middle of the book you're drawing after a double-sized issue. Got to do your Krakoa mm -hmm. and, and draw all the th right, 13 X-Men in there. Uh, but we skip back to modern day, and, it, and this is all through the voice of Cyclops' inner monologue. You know, when he becomes a leader, man, they, they lose an X-Man right off the bat. You got those Dave Cockrum designs of those, those weird Annie men. And now we're getting into burn Claremont territory. So when you get to situations like this, I wonder if it's like you have a chance to recompose that or rethink that one panel that you did a couple of years back, man. That's like sticking in your mind or whatever. Introduction of the Alpha Flight. Wonder how conscious Byrne was of all of his output. Because if he's doing three pages a day for years, you think he remembers that stuff distinctly? <laughs> you know, like you'll have you'll have athletes. They talk about athletes that'll be like, yeah, you ask you know Peyton Manning about some game eight years in in the fourth quarter or whatever and he knows exactly where everybody is who's on the field when like photographic memory i wonder if, if a guy like burn has that 42 razor i got that from joe montana <laughs> and super bowl such and such actually i think that was brett Favre saying that it probably would have been brett Favre. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some weird drawing in this this panel yeah this is uh like proteus like like distorts reality and stuff mm -hmm. so this is showing us that uh, that reality is going to come back in effect. Yeah, that's really fun, too, because it, it's not like that's uh, a digital effect or some photocopy magic. Yeah. I wonder if you could do something like like do the photocopy stuff and then light box it. So that, Maybe. So that, because, uh, that, I mean, that's so good, right? Like, right. it's so perfect. And then in case you weren't there la last month, man, every comic is somebody's first. You didn't see this last month. There it is right there. 
we launch into modern day. Cyclo Cyclops decides to go it alone, watches everybody drive off. The end with a little bit of an epilogue piece with young Kitty Pride showing up. And this is the way... So Cyclops is leaving the X-Men. And then we have this new character showing up. This is exactly what Claremont had in mind for the X-Men. This is the reason the New Mutants title existed. His whole thought process was give character like X-Men's going to go on forever. We know this, you know, but give characters an arc. Allow characters to have complete stories. And he had every intention of this being the end of the Cyclops chapter. You build new characters up. You 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 do the school system with the new mutants characters. See see which ones of those breaks out. But you have a rotating cast and you build up new properties all the time. That was always his thoughts, man. It's a really good approach to the comic book as a unit. Yeah. Because it's like we've got a complete story here with Cyclops. That's obviously our, our main story. But you also have the setup for pick up the next issue. Yes. You know, like like get some momentum rolling and I, I miss that part of comics. Like, I feel like people don't really work on the comic book as a unit as much as they once did. And it was an art form. Like, back then, it wasn't like you were writing for a trade. Yeah. You know, you were just trying to make a good comic book. Yes. And then next month, I'll try to make another good comic book. And it, and this kind of stuff, to me, is, is a good example of the format. This is the, like, with, with that thought in mind, Jimmy, uh, it is crazy to think about guys putting in all their effort. Frank Miller's working at this time. And he he talks about like wanting to make something that could exist on a shelf for longer than a month, yes. you know, <laughs> like you're busted your ass and the comics fans highly consumable. Like what else are you working on? Remember the, the, oh, the, the Dave Gibbons conversation, maybe the greatest thing any cartoonist has ever <laughs> said to me <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on Watchmen, like, like, Oh, what else you got? Because they're so primed for that monthly dose. Uh, but man, Aren't we lucky to live in a world where we ha can have stuff li live on shelves, you know, kind of sustain your, your life a little bit by having people support the works uh, that way? It's interesting because this doesn't strike me as being written for that, you know, written for the collection. And yet this is stuff that's been reprinted virtually since it first saw print. Right. You know, like it has had that super long life. And I don't know that that's what they were aiming for. I really do feel like they were aiming for, let's make the best comic book this month. Yes. And, you know, the payoff is if you get close to that, then the stuff does have demand long beyond that one month. Um, I've been playing Wordle, and it's impossible for me to not see Bitch on her shirt. Like, what does that shirt say? I was thinking that Tito was her favorite Jackson 5. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's a much more pleasant thought. It, it, it would be very 90s if it says Bitch. Anyhow. You good to go, Jimmy? I am. Okay, Fabers. Like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design. Tell your local comic shop to order copies for you today. The very next time you go to the comic shop, let them know about it. Trying to kayfabe affect that. Trying to spread the word through the comic shops because they are kind of the first wave of customers for Hulk Grand Design. And it is up to you, cartoonist kayfabe, to uh, let them know this is a book to stock for more than a month <laughs> you can also join me on patreon.com slash jim rug where you can see some of the behind the scenes some original art and process of how i'm making that comic and all of my comics uh it seems like the kayfabe audience is supporting the book in a big way man shouts to everybody who's pumping it up i took a look at those uh advanced reorders and i believe hulk grin design was four of the top 20 uh advanced reorders that very with your cover being the number one very good sign man but that doesn't mean that we uh Take our foot off the gas pedal. Keep that shit rocking, everybody. Red Room uh, Trigger Warnings is going to be hitting the shelves uh, March March 9th. I'm going to need you guys to su to uh, support that comic. Actually, I don't think it's March 9th now. I forget what the fucking date is. Uh, but it is coming out in March. Uh, I need you guys to uh, show up to the comic shop, support that series. It's going to be coming out on a monthly basis. You can read the comics on my Patreon right now today, serializing it every Tuesday. Uh, over 200 pages worth of comics up there as we speak. Um, three bucks for the archive there. You could get to our links in our link tree in a description below this video where you could get to all of our stuff, order all of our comics, support the channel in a big way. What else do we have, Jimmy? 
Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Given those marching orders, man, we're going to be on our way. Read more comics.